again in uh, another video of Adventure Story Channel. This video today will continue from our stop, our stop of uh, viewing of Angel Room, and we discuss also the details about of what we are seeing here. So it will be really, really nice to talk and to continue to talk of what we are seeing and to improve our uh, knowledge as marine engineers. So I will share uh, my knowledge through this last voyage that I was on board. So here we have the monitor again from where we stop. So this is how it looks out engine control room. And here you can see the PMI. So if we have any differences in the Pmax pressure or P -com compressor, uh, we will see it here. Or the mean indicated pressure. So here also we can see the RPM, the total produced megawatts, which is 5.4 and the load of the engine, 69%. So let's move on. As you can see, it changed. It changed also every time because it's in real time. And as you can see, now we have differences here. So there is a range here in when the engine in which uh, the engine must be in and also we have the same range for the compressor and for the pressure indicated values we have the same uh, deviations limits so this is in real time and if you will see when we the when the engine it's in standby mode and there is a situation where this engine it's not stable we have a big, really, really big differences here on the P max, P compressor, and P, P indicated. We have big differences. So also, uh, this system will not indicate when the engine works in a stern. Here we have, you will have some indication that the engine is a stern, but you will not have uh, some parameters here visible. So let's here, as you can see also, we have only one MOP working at that moment. And also here you can see, uh, this is the monitor which we had there. The monitor, it's um, for viewing different systems, different piping system. Here, as you can see, we have uh, the fuel load system and <laughs> Let's see some interesting things. One moment, I will shut the noise. So here will be really, really interesting to discuss about that. So as you can see, we have some draft here. We have forward draft and aft draft. And also we have uh, the mid draft. Um, as you can see, we have the fuel and diesel oil bunker line here. In this uh, monitor, you can see also different uh, lines. You can see the ballast of the vessel. You can see also uh, the dewatering system of the vessel. And also you can see some system information and also there is available a complete information about the vessel tanks. So quickly, quickly, we will see that we have some tanks here. We have some diesel oil tanks, which is here. The valves and the schematic position of the valves, it's really, really um, the copy of the real vessel. And also we have two valves here. We have two hydraulic valves in the fuel oil valve uh, line, which is only operated and it's in automatic. So these valves are remote with hydraulic oil 
all the other valves that you can see here must be operated by hand. So we have two diesel tanks. We have one port and one starboard. We have also number four bottom fuel tank port side. And we have also number four tank starboard side, bottom tank starboard side here. These bottom tanks have a problem that it's very, very far from engine room. It's down below from the number four cargo hold of the vessel. And if you are carry some in this kind of vessels in uh, bulk areas, if you carry some really, really sensitive cargo, you cannot hit your tanks. So you will get a lot of problems on these tanks because uh, you cannot hit the fuel and how you will pump the fuel from them if you if you will not hit at least 30 degrees 30 or 35 degrees so there is a problem and there is some kind of design problem of the vessel because also these tanks are really located on the bottom and you will have a really really difficulties on suction uh, these two tanks and also for hitting them the other tanks that located here are the deep tanks, deep port and deep starboard. And also we have five center, five center, as you can see, which is between the engine room. As you can see, there's a separate line, which writes here engine room. This separate the bulkhead of uh, the vessel. So half of the tank is inside the engine room and half of the tank is outside the engine room. It's exactly in the middle. The position of the tanks must have always a symmetry on the vessel because as we know, the vessel must be loaded equally from one side and another side. So we will not have a list and also we will not have big deviation of the draft between the forward draft and the aft draft. So the vessel and the structure of the vessel must be loaded equally. Another problem that we faced and I have seen first time in my career that one that captain order us to transfer all this fuel from here and put it here to deep port. So this was for the reason as I listen for some restriction of uh, the draft. Maybe in these vessels they doing like that, but I would like to learn more from the people that working on board these vessels. I ask also the third engineer. I ask also uh, other guys if they have made such thing before. And they tell me that they do not see that kind of things uh, before to, to take the fuel and put it to another tank here. So this fuel was, was very easy to suction because uh, was really, really um, different from the heavy, heavy fuel oil where the color was, was brown, was not so black and sticky and was really, really easy to suction even was not heated. So we feel that deep port tank later on uh, almost the full and then back again we transfer <laughs> the fuel back again to this tank of uh, number four bottom when we arrive. So we make around four days total transferring because our pump was really, really small. It was about 10 cubics per hour. And we divide it from the days because we cannot work in the pump straight. And also uh, the people when, when uh, there is nobody um, down in the engine room, it's really, really dangerous to leave the pump working and somebody must be also there in case that something happened to monitor also the pump and the pumping procedure because from the from the cabin you cannot see 
anything and also you cannot hear anything if in case that something happened but i believe that from this transfer of the fuel transfer pump our pump also get damaged uh, through the time because many many working hours as we know the gears inside and uh, the stator also will be worn and overheated through the time so this solution was really really bad because uh, there was the risk of damage of the pump and then uh, by not having any spares for this pump because this vessel was uh, newly delivered and do not have a, um, a proper ordering system for the spare parts that's why until the spare parts coming probably you will have a big big problem so spare parts must be ordered and with consideration of safety of the vessel but i as i have seen uh, we do not have such a um, opportunity to do that because the system was very very old for ordering the parts this was one of the problem and also it uh, was really really difficult mm -hmm. to bring some spare parts um, on board because we wait months to get some spare parts let's say for air compressor already passing four months to get some spares so uh, if you have to ask about uh, any kind of uh, this piping diagram and another system that this vessel had and the first time i have seen okay the vessel by itself the machinery was not so bad but everything was operated by hand and uh, the vessel in general was made it uh, was built in 2017 or 18 something like that but was made with old standards okay the vessel was new but with all standards so let's say that you had a vessel 40 years before something like that with old system everything was operated by hand and do not give you opportunity uh, for proper rest and maintain the working hours so probably the vessel was really really cheap by itself even we do not have a proper bed for sleeping i wake up from the pain of the back <laughs> and i can tell you that three months i didn't sleep at all so i even didn't put a time uh, for alarm to wake up in the morning so as you can understand for three months uh, working day and nights without stopping it's really really crazy so let's move on let's move on here we seen most of the parts here and one thing that i forget and i remember now that this system had a, a pump which called shift pump and i will show you also where it's located later on here also I had posted the changeover procedure, which in that vessel was very, very easy. So as you can see here in this monitor, there is some sh fuel shifter pump. So what you can do, you can take one tank and circulate it from the settling tank so you can heat up your uh, fuel. You have this opportunity to do that so it will suction from one tank circulate it inside the settling tank and send it back to the tank that you are suction the tank that you have your fuel the storage tank so let's go around to the engine room we can see our engine room here from the top let's see around this is our uh, small boiler 
and on the right here on the right you can see our incinerator the incinerator was good was really really good and the only thing that was not automatic uh, there is necessary one person to stay there and monitor always the temperature so it will not reach over the range where it will be trip so as you can see here the windows when i arrive my dear friends in this vessel the windows was so dirty that you cannot look outside and the engine room lighting also was very very bad condition so now as you can see all the lights was replaced it and engine room really really shines it's more easy to work more better to view and identify the hazards and the leakages if any we had many many leakages we had around 15 leakages and when we fixed them our boiler feed pump stopped to works and really really uh, work only when it's necessary so here you can see our incinerator our incinerator it's working now as you can see this is the selection for the incinerator to burn so as you can see it's running inside the furnace temperature it's 989 degrees so if it reach 1100 it will stop it will trip and also very very important thing for the incinerator it's to know how many waste oil sludge you are burning per hour and solids uh, which you can bear burn per hour this is for the reason that for the oil record book so you can make your calculations without this knowledge of the data and the details for the incinerator you cannot enter properly and you cannot maintain properly your uh, sludges also it's very very necessary to know how many sludges you produce per day and try to reduce as much as possible the production of sludges by running or stopping of purifiers necessary purifiers so this all these items is necessary to be monitored let's see and if you like to ask also we can go back here the ashes will be kept on board the vessel and also will be record uh, by chief officer and also the ashes will be delivered ashore never throw overboard because it's very very uh, pollute, polluted uh, material so never never throw anything on board uh, overboard sorry because uh, this will make a really really big damage to the uh, environment and the ashes will be given so you will take also the recipe and you will get your recipe and attach it to your old record book so here you can see the flame the flame it's okay it's steady we have the pressure of our sludge and from here we control we reduce or increase uh, the dosage of sludge there is some solenoids already with sludge we do not have any problem but you must know also that sludges must be burned uh, only in uh, specific areas where it's allowed never burn sludges in areas uh, like uh, secas areas it's prohibited so you must be carefully before turning or on your incinerator or your oily bilge separator you must always uh, communicate with the deck department to ask them for the positions and also if you are allowed to burn or to discharge 
the uh, oily water separator because for the reason because uh, the deck department know exactly the position of the vessel and they know the charts and also they have uh, be informed about that so everybody will be informed and any misunderstandings will be uh, sold. Here we have also a diesel oil line which you can supply before switch off the incinerator. It's necessary to flush the line from the sludge so it will not be stuck up. And one good thing, one good thing for uh, the incinerator itself and the sludges is good to make uh, some cleaning of the tanks to, from time to time because there is for sure collected of sludges here on this uh, level and after that you will gain some problem with suction of the sludges with the filters and also with the drain here uh, we do not have any problem. We had a good, really good evaporation from these tanks. These tanks uh, can contain about 1.5 cubic meters, so you can uh, easily transfer 3 cubic meters on the top and then start evaporation. You have both tanks to thermometers. The tanks will be separated somewhere here. You have both of them thermometers. Really, really fast to heat up these tanks for the reason uh, because these tanks located really really close to the boiler and as we know if the steam line locates here close to the boiler it will heat much much easier and the quality of the steam will be better so it will evaporate as much as possible so in this vessel I first time I meet that one um, we had a difference. All the water that we are washing inside the engine uh, workshop was going to waste oil tank. So if the personnel make some mopping inside or cleaning the engine room and the water was collected to the waste oil tank, so we had a lot of water inside waste oil tank. And um, we was lucky because uh, this kind of incinerators, this kind of uh, waste oil service tank made really, really good evaporation. So let's say in Korean vessels, if sometimes we can evaporate 150 uh, liters per 24 hours, let's say, uh, here we can evaporate around to 500 liters per each tank and that is true my dear friends that is true I have seen that 500 liters of evaporation because there is water there is water and water really really fast evaporates with this kind of system if then the water is easy will be reduced and your mixture down in the waste oil will be free from the water because the water is heavier and goes down slowly slowly the water will be finished and then will remain only pure sludge so that sludge will have some kind of water but you will see that you will not have evaporation the evaporation will be uh, finished so you will probably will evaporate only 50 liters, something like that. So next procedure, it will be the running of incinerator. Also, we had this uh, measuring level. Most of this uh, measuring level, it's not working already. So it's necessary to measure from the top with a stick. Also, the maker here made a, a blowing valve, air blowing valve, so you can blow uh, in case 
you have a lot of sludges here probably the nozzle goes somewhere here or somewhere here so it will uh, help to unplug any uh, plug piping um, so that is it about uh, the sludges the best system for me for measuring these kind of tanks is uh, the old way with the stick and the sanding pipe this is the best uh, solution for measuring that kind of tanks and for mostly of the tanks because this system it's really really not accurate with these measuring uh, devices and easy can be damaged okay it's floating but this kind of uh, measuring gauges have some kind of a uh, rope very very small rope and it if it will gain some problem after that it will be really really difficult to fix so we have also quick closing valves here which must be tested for the operation and let's move on let's move on later so we have also a ceiling tank here for the gases uh, also this is the rain uh, drain in case that it will be collected here from the diesel generator uh, piping exhaust piping uh, here we have our boiler down below we have our ignition pump and a fuel supply pump of the boiler it's located here and also the gauges here as you can see down some panels of a sterilizer here and the filter this also we have a really really big problem for ordering the filters because as you know we have this old system where you need to check the book and by book you will write a paper and this paper you will send to the office and after uh, the same story so something must be improved uh, it's really really old system 20 years old before we have also our sterilizer on the right some panels flow meter of uh, the boiler some filters and some valves for diesel and fuel change over here this is the fuel valves diesel valves uh, filters of the fuel or diesel bypass valve if you get any problem and we will finish our video here i will explain what problem we get with the flow meter we had one day a problem with the boiler our boiler what was not starting we check everything and the problem dear friends was the flow meter was stuck up because there is some turning parts inside and uh, down below here they stuck up so it was really necessary to open this bypass valve so we will bypass our stuck uh, flow meter we order the parts finally that is true we order the parts and likely they will come <laughs> sometime so now you know my dear friends if you have some starting problems with your boiler try also to bypass the fuel so you can check also this uh, case so dear friends thank you that you have watched adventure story channel and we will uh, continue our next uh, engine room tour we will discuss also uh, some interesting things we have all our engine room in front you can ask also your comments what you have seen here maybe i have forget something to talk about and it will be really really nice to discuss thank you that you have stayed tuned and see you in the next video bye bye